in this section we're going to be taking a look at all the different tools and techniques that we can use to go ahead and build the wood grain material and textures for this part of our project so let's go ahead and get started so this might seem like a little bit of an odd way to start this part off but I thought this was a uh, pretty pretty fun and cool technique um, so I want to show you how we built this iconic kind of a uh, skull image that you see on the side of the wood and that it's actually picking up on some of the wood grain as well. So I'm going to show you a technique that they have for actually using um, a 3D manipulator in here for being able to take a texture and project that onto uh, the model. So it's actually kind of a newer technique in this version of Substance Painter. So I think it's been out for a few different versions. Maybe by the time you look at this, this is going to be really old news, but it's still pretty um, pretty fun. So I thought I'd show this off because it's a little bit different than what we looked at in the metal part. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hop over to Photoshop and I'm going to show you these different images that I found. So I originally first created this image over here and I realized it was uh, just way too detailed and uh, too complex for what I was really looking for. So uh, you do have to be a little bit careful about this, but I just went online and uh, found a skull and bones, like I found somebody else's art that I had. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to alter it. And I just did this for uh, speed purposes so I can kind of get through this part a little bit faster. But I'm going to go ahead and take it and alter it uh, to a big degree. Um, and sometimes you might take some shortcuts like this. Uh, you do have to be pretty careful about doing this. It could be frowned upon um, pretty heavily. Uh, now I know this is this is an icon that's been around for a really really long time so there's a lot of differences and deviations for this uh, icon so maybe not quite as big of a deal and again I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna alter it um, inside the program so the goal is it shouldn't it shouldn't exactly resemble um, what this is. I'm sure there's uh, some literature out there that can point you in the right direction for how much you had to change a piece of artwork and things like that uh, but just keep in mind if this was your artwork and you're changing it would you want somebody taking your artwork and uh, using it in that way um, so that being said I'm just gonna go ahead and hop on over to substance painter and you can see over here in the textures area I've got some different things that I've uh, imported in that you can see. So to get a texture in, it's pretty uh, pretty simple. We can go to this import resources, or we can go to uh, import resources up here, either one. And if we click on this, we'll go ahead and add a resource, and you can navigate to where this sits. So um, I've already done the uh, skull and bones that thing. I've got this uh, floral design that was uh, used in an earlier part of the project. Um, so I need to tell it where I want to put it. If I'm going to use this as put it in the alpha area, if I'm going to do a color LUT environment or texture, I'll just throw it into texture. And then this is asking you where do you want to import your resources to this current session that you have and to the, the project that you've got going on or into the actual shelf. Uh, and you can see that uh, each one of these is going to be a little bit, a little bit different and kind of give you um, an explanation for how you're importing this and I'm just going to put this on the shelf like this I'm going to go ahead and say import and you can see now if I uh, go into the textures area this should show up in the textures area so this is um, gonna work for like that this image was just a black and white image now if I go over to Photoshop if I save these out as uh, Photoshop files and they've got transparency on there I'll actually come into Substance Painter and have all the transparency information already ready to go for you on there. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this group. I'm going to hide it and we'll start over from scratch and I'll just say uh, what I did for this and I'll call this skull like this. And then we'll make a new uh, fill layer like we've done before in the past. And let me go ahead and I'm just going to I'm just going to get rid of this mask altogether. So I've got this fill layer and I'll call this skull like this. Uh, let me drag this up a little bit so we can see what we're working with. And I just want color and roughness. Okay, so I'm going to take my skull and bones that I've got and I'll click and drag that out to the base color like this. And then that becomes 
a texture that we can work with. Now at this point, we can say instead of projection and you UV projection, um, also while we're on that, if you wanted to get this thing to um, repeat multiple times over the UVs, you could change this in here. Um, so I could do something like 50 or something like that. So you can see how we could tile that thing across. You could do rotation of your objects and stuff like that too. I'm just going to go ahead and reset this back and I'll put this at 1. Instead of using UV projection, I'll do planar projection like this. And if we go to this 3D manipulator up here, you can see we can start to work with a manipulator. And this is going to show you this actual object as it's projected on here. Now I'm going to rotate this as well. And so I'm going to rotate it uh, this this way. If I hold on shift, I can rotate in uh, specific degrees of increments here. And then I'll put it on scale, and I'll scale this down. So what's happening, why is it disappearing, is because this 3D manipulator is no longer actually intersecting with the object. So if we push it forward, you can see that it's going to uh, start to project onto the model. And then... I might want to take the scale of this and it's kind of taking that image that I had. You might want to take your image and make sure it's a square if you want to make sure it's like exactly the same as what you have in like Photoshop. Uh, but you can manipulate it this way. You can uh, go ahead and scale the entire thing down. And then I'll go ahead and put it on move and I'll move right in here like this right here. And this is probably where I want to put it if I push like this, you can see how bright it is. I want it to be on max brightness for this. And so I think I'm I'm liking the position and the scale of this here. So what we got to do next is we'll take a look at the, um, the different controls for this and be able to say if we can go and push this thing all the way through. So we've got UV wrap and I'll put it on none and it'll just go into this particular area that we're looking at right now for this right there like that. Um, and then we've got depth culling. If we turn that off, it should project all the way straight through the model. So that could be what you want. I know I'd like the same thing on the opposite side, but to me it's not worth it to have it be projecting all the way through. Now we could go and mask this thing out and do some work on it like that to do some masking. But I think what I'll end up doing is I'll get this all set up on one side, duplicate it, and then take the duplicate version and then rotate it around onto the other side. So I think that's what I'm going to do for this one. So the the next thing is going through, and I've got roughness. So I made a roughness map that matches the shape on here. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag this over here like this. So just like what we looked at in earlier sections about roughness, depending on uh, the sheen that you want on this, uh, that's the value that you'd use for this uh, um, this image right here. So like in Photoshop, then I just gave this a, it's not pure white, um, so pure white's going to get rid of um, any kind of sheen and everything. So this is like about 0.75 or 70%, 70 to 75%, somewhere in that range. So it's going to be up to you what what you want uh, for that particular look like that. So we've got this for the skull. This is put into this folder group. If you remember what we were doing before, if we want this to be completely non-destructive, we could make another group like this. We could throw it in here. Uh, you can call the group uh, wood grain, something like that. And then I'll go ahead and uh, use a bitmap mask. We'll go ahead and use the curvature. And you can see I've got CUR typed in there already. So we put the curvature map on there. Then we can go back to the effects just like we did before. We'll add a levels. We'll start to really crank uh, this up like this. And then get this range a bit smaller. What I want to do is build up these lines on the, uh, the cracks quite a bit like that. And I think that's looking pretty nice. Now, if we want to lower the overall opacity of this thing, we could take this and then push this down. So it's really, really up to you uh, what you want to do for that. The other thing I didn't put on here is height. If we wanted to give the illusion that this thing is actually sticking out of the surface a little bit, we could potentially 
raise raise that up um, now where that becomes tricky is this it's actually affecting everything else that we've got uh, going on in here and I'd only want that uh, to come up in a particular area so um, I might have to do a little further investigation on that and try to try to figure that out but um, I'll just I'll just get rid of height for for now um, but it is possible to raise that up. I might have to do something very similar with the height where what I did for roughness is uh, make a special map that I throw into height. So I could just do a little quick test on here for this. And you can see how that would, would work on there at that point. Um, now I haven't done this before. I'm just going to give it a try and see if we can put it on height like this and then if we could take the opacity of this and drop it back and so that seems to be working and uh, I think that that could work for us like that so what I just did was changed uh, the the actual um, channel that we're kind of working on and you can see that normally we're just set to base color so again that that seems to work and then I just went to height and then just drop that down so I'm glad that worked out because um, I wasn't exactly planning for that and that uh, that seemed to work okay so the last part is that we could come here to the top and if we want to work non-destructively we can go to this uh, mask that's in the, the group here it's, it's white so everything's showing and then we can go back to our brushes that we've got and I'm just going to use a basic hard brush and then um, at this point Let's go ahead, and we do have symmetry turned on, so later whenever we paint, this will show up on the other side as well. I'm just going to make this brush size a little bit smaller. And what I'm going to do is start to use this to kind of paint out and change the shape and change the design of this thing a little bit and make it feel a little bit more worn and torn. And so this is where... You know, if you're inside of Photoshop, you could do this work to change the design, or you could interactively do this inside of Substance Painter. So it's up up to you wherever you uh, want to do that particular work like this. So again, this is what I was talking about, where you would need to change the design and the shape to a certain degree. And, and again, if we're doing something that's pretty iconic and pretty pretty simplistic, then this could just be a way of kind of um, getting the design move forward a little bit faster. Again, I know I know for sure there's going to be people that have uh, some problems with this, but um, I guarantee you people use shortcuts in production all the time uh, to make certain things happen a bit quicker. And uh, the, like I said, the only reason I'm kind of showing this and doing this is to show you a way that you could potentially speed things up a little bit. We got something like that, and I think that's starting to look pretty cool like that. There we go. So this is working on this current side. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to try and see what happens if we go ahead and duplicate this. And I'll call this like skull. Uh, this is on the left side of the object. And we'll go ahead and duplicate this entire thing. Um, now, this is one thing that we didn't really talk about is smart materials. We did talk about the fact that there are smart materials but it's possible that you could make your own smart material and if you have a folder group like this if you uh, right click on this you could say um, create smart uh, material right here so we'll go ahead and do that and it should go through and you can see that it's going to make this uh, skull left and then now I could drag this thing out and I've got Two versions of it. Uh, what I could have done before too is I could just say uh, duplicate layers that would have duplicated it but if we want to keep these for further sessions and you want to keep using this on a project and maybe share this with people um, you could as a team member create something like this and then you guys could share this. So I'm just going to call this skull right like this 
And then I'm going to go into the settings for this. Um, we got our wood grain and then we got our skull. And then we've got our projection. So now at this point, what I will do is we'll rotate this 180 degrees. So I'm holding down shift as we do that. And then I will put it on the move tool and then push it on this side like this. Okay. So, uh, one thing I haven't been paying attention to on this is that it is projecting all the way through the model currently. So let's go ahead and take a look at the settings on here for, let's scroll up and then put on depth calling for this. And then that's going to give the uh, ability to turn this thing off after a certain certain kind of distance. And I need to do it for both of them. So I'm going to open this this up here and then go to the skull area on here. And I've got the wood grain and I got the skull inside of here and I'll put depth calling on for this one as well. And so we've got a, uh, this thing's gonna push so far through. So I wanna get it on here just right. And then I'll have to go to the, um, this version of the skull here and then I'll just push this back and make sure it's not pushing through here so it looks like we're uh, good to go on this so sorry if I was a little shaky on that section but uh, some of these things I just haven't I haven't actually done before so I was just kind of uh, feeling my way through the way the tools work so that's pretty cool to see that the tools are uh, innovative enough to where you could um, basically kind of figure out how the tool works through some of the various settings that are on there. So, so I'm going to scroll through here and rotate our light around and see how our light reacts to that. So now that we have that um, done, what I'm going to do is just leave these at the very top. Now the only thing that I think I might do at a later point, and we'll kind of have to reevaluate these after we start getting some more of the wood texture uh, built, is maybe we want that to feel like it's paint and it's painted directly on top of this thing but we might want to change the blending mode so it picks up some of the color information and things like that that's set underneath of it so maybe it feels like paint that's kind of worn so much that uh, whatever was painted underneath of it is starting to show or bleed through on that um the only other thing that i th think i could show you that might be kind of um Kind of interesting is if we do one of these effects and we do um, add a filter and we haven't really talked about uh, filters yet and we select this there is a blur filter that we could run on here so we could potentially run this um, at this point and if I took this off this what I painted let's just go ahead and I'm gonna toggle the mask off so we don't see any of the stuff that I hand painted. So this blur is a non-destructive way of being able to add to it and go back through and you could change the blur intensity of this. But if you wanted to soften up the edges on this a little bit, it's possible that you could do that. And then so I can go here and I'll toggle the mask back on there. Now the other thing is with this mask, we could do uh, the same thing. We could add another filter. We could go to blur and maybe I'm blurring out just a little bit of what I've painted on here. So this to me has got a little bit more of an effect of maybe it was airbrushed on there versus, you know, taking a hard edge brush and then kind of brushing it on there. So depending on what you, what you want, what kind of an effect you're kind of going for, I'm just going to remove those and take those off because I, I kind of like the, uh, I like the idea of this being nice and crisp like this. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and we'll start working on actually building the color information for the wood. Okay, in this section we're going to start taking a look at how we can build uh, the bases for our color. So I'm just going to make another folder group and then call this uh, base color. It's really up to you, whatever you want to name this. We're just going to make another one of our fill layers that we've been looking at and been using. I'm going to turn everything off expect, except for uh, color roughness and we really don't need metallic I don't believe for this uh, we're gonna take the roughness drag it up quite a bit um, 
I'm going to get the base of this to be somewhat rough. Like there should maybe be a little bit of specularity on it, but that's about it. So I'm just going to drag the saturation in here and start pushing this up here in orange and trying to find a particular range. So I'm going to try to get something that's a little bit darker than what I want the overall thing to be and not super, super saturated. So again, with the hue, we can push maybe in this area, and then maybe I've got this a little bit tinted towards red, just a little bit. So it's kind of hard to get like super fine control in there. If you need to type in a number, you could do that. Um, so I'm gonna get right here in that area, and saturation, maybe I'll back that off a little bit right in there like this. And so I'll call this base color. I'll drag this into the folder group. Uh, we don't really need to, I don't think, but I'm just going to go ahead and put this on pass through just to uh, make sure nothing funky happens with this. And after that's made, I'm going to make uh, a duplicate of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click and say duplicate layers. Uh, I'll say base color two for this one. And then this one I'm going to make a bit lighter and push it in this this area probably desaturate it a bit and then at that point what we can do is I'm just going to put a bitmap mask on it and we'll do what we've been doing with the curvature so if you don't see that you can just type in CUR for curvature throw that on there and then we're going to put a layer effect and we're going to do the levels and we're going to crush the values kind of like what we've done before so as we do this I'm going to start moving a lot uh, quicker on this just because we've we've done this so many times over and over again so there's nothing uh, spectacular nothing crazy nothing new that we're doing on this part so we should be able to move a bit faster I believe um, I think that's starting to look pretty good now keep in mind uh, we can always right click and say invert mask so if we wanted to try to get the bulk of it this more lighter color and then have the uh, the cracks uh, be the darker thing then so we can we could play around with that and then we might have to go back through and then readjust our our levels that we've got going on so it's really up to you how you want to order that and how you want to stack this thing in here like that so I'm going to go ahead and do that um, once that's done I think what I was going to do is this if we take this off you can see we've got this this part here and this one had a very low roughness value I can maybe drag that over even more and then we could take this top color and then take the roughness of this and then maybe uh, bump this bump this up a bit like this what we got going on I want to see just a little bit of sheen on here for this so the other thing is we could do we could we could take this roughness value down quite a bit like this in here and I'm going to take this one and make it even less rough right so there's like hardly any roughness at all as it goes and travels uh, into this darker this darker kind of area And what I'm going to do now at this point is I'm going to make another another uh, fill layer. And then this time I'm just going to use roughness. Get it somewhere in this range like this. And then I'm going to take this and put it in a group. I'll call this rough. like this and what I'll do is let's just try this we're gonna copy the uh, the mask and then we're going to put it on here we'll add a black mask and then we'll paste into mask so we should have the the same thing from from this so if we just hold on alt and click on it and take a look at it and then hold on alt and click and take a look at it we should have the same exact mask at that point so what we've just done is uh, 
masked out this roughness area. Now we could play around with the levels and then readjust that and try to get that. So I'm trying to get some of this wood grain in here. And then also if I invert this, let's just take a look and see what we get. So that's definitely not what I want. I'm going to hit undo for that. And then at this point, I'm just going to take this roughness area. I'm going to take and put a black mask on there. So we're just killing all that all together. And then now I can do some hand painting and we're going to go to our brushes. And this time I'm just going to try to see if I could find uh, something that's more like a like a pattern. Um, I do I, I do like this uh, this bark texture. So I'll hold on control, right click to put this up a bit, take the flow down, and then we should be painting with white at that point. And maybe I need to make this a little bit smaller. And I want to see how the uh, specular kind of flows off of this. So let's take the flow and pull this up a bit more. Now I can start to see that. I don't want to be too heavy handed with this, but I'm just trying to get some specular variation in here a little bit. Maybe I'll put this up a bit more. And then I want to see how this uh, travels across the surface. So when trying to figure out specularity, I think it's important that you uh, rotate your light quite a bit. So it's possible that we could, we could start to build areas of interest if we want and kind of pull out certain areas. Like if I wanted to emphasize this uh, face area a little bit more, I could, I could do that. I'll just paint some variation in there. And then the other thing is, we've already kind of looked at this. If I take a basic hard brush, um, or do even the basic soft brush, and I tap X, that's going to make us to where we're painting with a black value down there. And then at this point, let's take a look at the specular of what we got going on here. So maybe maybe I want to do some very fine kind of hand painted things like this. Uh, the flow is like super heavy on that. So maybe I drop that back a little bit. And this is where maybe I'm just um, a little bit faster and a little bit more gestural with some of this stuff just so I get some kind of uh, breakup on this. Now, if we get really close, you can kind of see this sloppy pattern that I'm doing, but as we get back away from the model, it's not quite as noticeable, and then maybe it just starts to uh, break up some of that specularity that I've allowed to kind of pop through and come through. Maybe I don't like so much of it on there for this area. And this is where we could start to evaluate things. Um, the wood feels a little bit dull to me, and then maybe I could go through and then add a little bit more warmth and just add a little bit more saturation on this. And if I push this up, it's going to dull it up this way. If I kind of pull it down, if I'm not careful, I could overdrive that a bit too much. So I'm just, it's kind of a subtle change, but I think it's enough that it um, kind of makes a difference for us like this. So I think this is starting to give us a nice kind of base to kind of play around with. Um, if I want to get rid of some of this, if if, if this just feels too strong in areas, then this is your ability to kind of just paint out certain details and say, like, I just really don't want this to fall in this area. So you, uh, this is, um, it's just um, 
something that you you're going to have to do as an, as an artist and kind of work your way around the model and work your way around uh, what it is that you're creating and just use your artistic eye a bit to kind of give a break up on so this is this is obviously we're trying to make non random patterns right because things that happen in nature usually it's not going to be uh, have this like kind of CG look to it so we're we're definitely uh, spending time to kind of break up maybe just what the computer gives us and not just accept that completely and that usually works out uh, fairly fairly well and so I'm just gonna keep painting on this a little bit more and then uh, call it for this particular section um, you do want to get up close to the model you want to check it from a uh, close-up distance but then you also want to push this thing away and you want to make sure that things kind of read from like this would be more of a medium level read now as we rotate the light around in certain angles you can see that uh, we can see a lot of that spec so instead of maybe doing some lines the other thing that we could do is just do more like dot uh, type of patterns and if I put this back on that basic card then we could uh, really make some larger kind of dots at this point to kind of get some nice specular breakup and if you paint at the bottom of these things like these these wood planks like this I think that kind of helps too so you're starting to age this thing in a way and start to build some kind of history for stuff um, now you can see this is like pretty darn strong back here in the back so maybe something about what, what you're seeing on here that's this could be like little little tiny uh, areas of maybe mold or something to that effect like this is maybe little small growth patterns for things Okay. I think that will do that for this particular section. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and we'll start moving on to some larger color swatches. Okay, in this part of the video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can differentiate some parts using values. So if we just uh, tap C to see the color and we're just taking a look at color alone, just like what we did on the uh, metal up here, you can see that we've got these different parts and we're going to separate them with some color. Right now everything's just very uh, monochromatic as far as uh, what we see here. There's no difference between this shape, this shape, and this shape. So I definitely want to get some separation between the wheels and then this block that you see back in here. So I'm going to tap M right now for this and we're going to go to this area for base color. We'll go above that. Um, maybe I can just make a new folder and I'll call this uh, value. And I'll go ahead and make a new fill layer call this value 01 I'll throw this into here I'll take this and make this a pass through and then um, I think I'm going to take this and put it in, uh, from a blending mode of normal I'm just going to go ahead and do multiply like this the only thing I'm going to actually do on this one is have color turned on for it so we can turn this on and off and you can see we can make this a bit darker um, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and use the add mask with color selection and let's go ahead and pick a color we'll do the wheels on here and we'll make the wheels a little bit darker like this and I think I think that's gonna be pretty decent for the wheels I don't think I'm gonna do anything uh, too much different and so I'm just gonna duplicate this I'm gonna right click on here say duplicate layers and call this value 2 and on this color select I'm gonna pick a color and I'm gonna pick this one back here and get rid of this first one so let me just go ahead and pick that so we should have exactly the same thing if we tap C we can see what we have uh, going on here now at this point um, what I think I'm gonna do is tap M I'm probably gonna take this and take the color and then maybe give just 
a little bit of saturation in red for this and maybe push it up this way just a little bit. So I'm just going to, like I said, I'm, I'm just trying to build just a little bit of separation between these different uh, parts that we have here. And maybe for me the value of the wheels is just a little bit too dark. So we can raise that up just a little bit like this. And so I think that's going to be pretty good just for that part and getting some separation. So just shift right click and then I'm uh, rotating the light. I'll just tap C to check the color on this and you can see that we are starting to indeed get a little bit of separation on here for that. So I think that's going to work. I'll tap M to go back for this. And we'll go ahead and save this and call this section. All right, for this part, we're going to go ahead and add AO. And just like what we did with the um, upper part of the cannon, we're going to go ahead and steal the AO map and then use that and multiply a color over the top of things to add a darkening effect on everything. So I'm just going to make a new uh, folder group, and I'm going to call this AO like this. And I'm going to keep this. We still have our um, icons that you see on the side for the paint, and we'll just have that sit on top of everything else. So we'll just have AO set at the top of the stack for this. We'll make a new fill layer. Let's call this AO like this. We'll drag it into the AO folder. Then we're going to go ahead and then make a bitmap mask. Instead of curvature this time, we'll do AO, which it should be right at the very beginning. So we'll just do ambient occlusion like this. And it'll go ahead and throw that on there. And what we can do at that point is change this from normal to multiply and if we take a look at this we want the inverse of this so we'll right click and say invert mask like this and then we've already got it should throw a levels adjustment on there if it doesn't you can go ahead and add one right here like that but uh, now that we have that made we could uh, broaden out the amount of ambient occlusion if we wanted on here like this and uh, this will thicken things up for us a bit and I don't want to get too too intense with uh, with everything so we'll go back here we'll put that uh, from normal let's just put this on multiply the top folder sorry that should have been on pass through like this um, and then the only thing I really want from this is um, color we could have some roughness on there and decrease the roughness on there uh, so it doesn't allow any specular to to come through in that particular area. Um, and then at that point, let's just, uh, if I tint it towards like a, a dark red or something like that, if I tap C, uh, we can see what's going on uh, color-wise. Uh, so you can see this effect that we got going on. Let's just go to the levels and again, I'm, I'm going to broaden this out. What I would actually like to do is probably tint it towards maybe a purple kind of color. Somewhere in there like that. And I think what I'm going to try to do is continue to see if I can broaden this up even more. So that's going to be pretty darn intense like this, if we're right here. Um, and now I can just kind of uh, take this and I'll drop back the value of it. So I'm going to push it somewhere right in here like this. So if I tap M for this, you can see it's quite a bit darker at this point. Let's just turn this on and off and see how much of a darkening effect that we're getting on everything. So I think for me, uh, that feels a bit too strong. So I just want to find this, uh, this sweet spot that maybe is somewhere in here. And then maybe that's still just a little bit too saturated for me. So I don't think it's ever really a bad thing to overdrive values and then uh, once you find that it's working and it's kind of got the spread and everything else that you're kind of looking for then um, then you can go ahead and um, back that back that off a bit now whenever I baked my AO map I did uh, the match by name so we're not getting any kind of baking 
and through here. And so like parts here and here. What we could do is try and see what the difference is. Uh, you might want to actually bake two different maps. Let's just go ahead and say bake mesh maps. And then the only thing I would need to bake at that point would be the ambient occlusion. And um, instead of doing self occlusion only by same mesh name, we can do always. And that's going to take a look at everything. We'll go ahead and click this to bake this and see what the differences are. Uh, so the AO map will take a little bit longer to bake. So as it's baking, I'm just going to go ahead and I'll push this off to the side right here so we can kind of see some of the quality of what we would be getting. And then I'll go ahead and pause the video and wait for it to finish. Okay, we're pretty close to having this thing baked up. So it's been going for a few minutes now. Um, I'd say probably about uh, at least 7 to 10 minutes uh, so I just stepped away while I was baking, but um, I definitely wanted to call out the quality and you can see that there's um, a huge difference in how parts like this wheel and it's getting close to the edge of this uh, look. So the advantage of this is obviously it uh, produces this shading effect like this. The problem is if you had to do something where let's say the wheels were able to be detached from this in the game and it was able to be blown off, then you would have this dark shading still on the wood part and um, obviously that would be wrong so you have to kind of uh, be able to account for that and then also if you had any parts that were being able to be moved so this part of the cannon meets this part of the block back here and if you're going to take the block and move it uh, and rotate it then that could be a problem for that so there are reasons why you'd want to bake these things separate and um, that's basically kind of it so I'll just have to see to go take a look at the color uh, information on there and you can kind of see what we got going going on and how it's adding some darkening effect for that uh, let's go back to the layers I'm just gonna go and make sure uh, we're gonna do the bitmap mask and we'll just select this new ambient inclusion map that we got going on here and then I'll invert the mask like that and uh, let's just take a look at it. So everything should be good to go. Tap M for this. And it does feel uh, pretty pretty dark. Um, so I would have to uh, take this in through here like this. If I wanted to lessen the entire effect, I can I can I can slide this back in through here. So I think I think that's going to be uh, giving us a pretty pretty nice look at this point, and I'm pretty happy with the results. And if we want, we can just turn this on and off, and you can see there's a uh, just a slight punch to everything, and that's kind of what I'm looking for. So nothing too heavy-handed, but uh, going to give us a nice little punch on some of the shapes for things. So in this section, we're going to dive back into the section where we're at with the value. And what I wanted to show you is that even though we used a color selection, it's possible that we can keep painting into this mask by adding an additional uh, layer effect. And if we go in here and say paint, we can paint into a mask and get rid of uh, certain areas. So if I hold down Alt and then click on this, you can see this is the mask that we built. The other thing that I wanted to show you is that it's possible that we can do a uh, this a hybrid view where we're looking at the the model in 3D and in 2D so I hit F1 for that and if we hit F2 we can go back to the 3D view for that sometimes it's easier to uh, take a look at the 2D view and work that way uh, the other thing I want to show you is that we have this uh, polygon fill mode so sometimes it might be easier for you to actually grab polygons and then fill those with uh, colors as well so I'm gonna go ahead and then fill this with black put it on just pure black in here and then I can I do have a uh, symmetry turned on and I'm just gonna drag a marquee over this particular section right in here uh, let's go to the paint area and then once that's selected then I can come here and start uh, painting these out now I can zoom in on this wheel part and you can see it might be easier to actually grab uh, these polygons in the this 2D view versus the 3D view. So this is where it can become kind of beneficial for you at times. So I'm just 
I'm going to go through, drag through on these. And again, because symmetry is turned on, it still works with symmetry as well. So that's uh, a pretty cool feature. I'm going to go just on the back side here and then just check, check this um, a little bit. And I didn't like what was happening to let's let's hit undo on this a few times because if you see on the back side, it was uh, selecting through on the the back side for this, and I definitely did not uh, want that to happen. So I'm just gonna be I'm gonna try to be as careful as possible and see if this is selecting anything on the back side on this. So I'm just gonna. Select these polys here. And it looks like if I'm just a little bit more careful with selection, I can make sure that it's not doing any selecting of parts that I'm not wanting this thing to grab. I'm just going to keep checking the back side of this just to make sure. this. I'll grab that part and it looks like everything's pretty good for that. And then I'll just go ahead and move to this area and make sure it's not picked anything there. So then that will help me figure out where I need to start selecting from on here. So I can just grab this and I'm just going to keep an eye on the back side of this just like we did on the front. Then just drag through. Like this. And we've almost got this completed. And then now if I want to take a look at this, I can just click on this part of there and that will release us from looking at the mask. So again, if I hit F2, we can look at just the 3D view. If we hit F1, we can look at uh, both of these simultaneously. I'll tap F to frame both of these. Now if I hit F3, I can just look at just the uh, 2D view. So it's a way for you to bounce back and forth between the, the different modes that you have that you see here for this. And uh, the other thing is, after we've put this on, if this is too rough of a transition for you, you could add another layer effect where you could do add in a filter, and then we could choose the blur filter, and then just blur that mask out slightly. So I'm just going to hold down Alt and then click on it again, and you can see if we go to blur, we could uh, crank up the blur intensity of that. So I'm just going to I just want it to be pretty slight. So I'll just keep it right in this area, somewhere there, something like this, and then just click back off this to take a look. So I've gotten rid of any kind of uh, really harsh transition that you have here. So that's a way that you can um, use the color select. You could uh, even paint more into that mask and then be able to use the uh, selection type for uh, working on polygons at that point. And, uh, if we want to get out of that tool, we can come here and let's go back to our brushes and we're back into that mode that uh, we're used to using. In this section, we're going to use a very similar technique to what we've done before on the metal. And we're going to use the 3D positional data to do a gradient and make the bottom part of our cannon a bit darker than the top part. So let's go ahead and make a folder group right in here like this and we'll call this uh, bottom grad. And then from there, I'm just going to make a new fill layer. And I'll call this bottom grad. Like this. I'll throw this into the folder group. Uh, I'll just set this from normal to pass through for the folder group. I'm going to go ahead and put on this on normal. I'm going to put on multiply so it does a darkening effect. And the only thing that I want on here is color for right now. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to make it a bit more saturated and give a bit of a purplish kind of hue to it. Not too much saturation, so I think that's pretty good. And if I turn this on and off, you can see how much of a darkening effect that will actually have on this at that point. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a white mask uh, so it just doesn't uh, kill anything about what we've got going on here. 
And then from there, let's just go ahead and add a generator. And then with the generator, select this. And then let's do a, let's just go ahead and use a 3D distance generator like this. And then at that point, uh, we can start to take a look at this. I'm going to hold down Alt and then click on the mask itself. And what I'm going to do is click on the 3D distance node. And let's just go ahead and crank the contrast down a little bit. Uh, we've got our X position. Let's keep it right in the middle like this, 0.5. And I think if we do the contrast a little bit lower in here, I'm going to do that. If we do the offset, we can drag this down and make it a little bit easier for us to kind of see exactly where this thing is at. So the position in Y, I'm going to drag it down in here. And the position in Z, I'm just going to push it back here a little bit. So I think that's working rather well for me. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, change the radius, make it a bit larger. If I do the radius there, then I can probably drop this thing down a little bit more. I'm gonna increase this. So I'm just gonna try to push it down. I don't I don't want too much of the top of the cannon to get hit, and, and it won't. We're doing just the wood part, but still just thinking about uh, 3D distance and everything else like that. So let's take a look at the contrast, and if we drag this in through here, I think I think that's going to be pretty good for what I'm seeing. So I'm going to click back here and take a look at this. We can turn this on and off and it doesn't it doesn't appear to be uh very strong now. So if we want after we're taking a look at this let's just drag the contrast this way a little bit more. I'm going to I'm going to go back to this. Sometimes it's easier for me to see with black and white. So I want to maybe intensify that. Kind of do that. Let's just go ahead and click back here like this. And now we can turn this on and off and take a look. So I think I think that's going to work for me. I, I just wanted to draw a little bit more attention to uh, to the bottom here like this. And um, I think that's going to work fairly well, well for this part. Uh, and the next part, we'll do a very similar setup, but we'll try to do a little bit of lightning on top, like what we did for the cannon for some dust and things like that. In this section, we'll be doing a very similar workflow. Instead of darkening, we'll go ahead and lighten with a uh, gradient. So let's just go ahead and make a new folder group, and I'll, I'll call this top grad. Like this, and then we're going to make a new fill layer. Okay, and I'll call this top grid as well. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this in here. I'll make this pass through for the uh, folder group. And on this, I'm going to put it on um, screen. We can try screen. Screen will definitely lighten everything up quite a bit. And the only thing I need on this is just the color information. So you can see how much that uh, changes at that point. Um, for this one, I'm going to do kind of a yellowish orange somewhere in this range. And I don't want tons of saturation. Uh, let's push it down here a little bit. I just, I just want to see what we get in this range. And I might change it from screen and then try overlay. Um, I do want to see with the with the overlay, I can lighten it up. It's going to take some of the saturation. It can it can saturate it quite easily. So I got to be a little bit careful with that. But I kind of like what is happening now at this point. So again, we can turn the visibility on and off for this and kind of just see what's happening. So I think that's going to work. For from the standpoint of uh, being able to lighten this thing up. Um, one thing we could do is we could add a, uh, a white mask to this so nothing changes on here. Since we've already done a positional gradient on here and did this 3D distance thing, what we could potentially do is just copy this 
uh, copy this mask and we'll go here and then we'll paste into mask and it'll do the 3D distance thing for us. Uh, then at that point, if you hold on Alt and then click on this, then we can see what we've got going on for, um, you know, the position and everything. This time we could just take the position Y and then push this up in this area. And then let's click off the mask and then take a look at what this is going to do for us. So it's definitely going to lighten things up. Now, depending on how uh, complex I want this folder structure to go, I think this is the only thing that I'm going to really want on here is I'm going to get a little bit of the wood grain back into here with this. So I want the cracks of the wood grain to not receive this light. So what I'm going to do is add a bitmap mask. So I'll go here and then say bitmap mask. And then let's just go ahead and cur use curvature. So I'll start typing C-U-R for that to find the curvature map. And then at that point, if it doesn't make the levels adjustment for you, you can go here to the layer effects and say add levels. And then I'm going to squish the values of this within here. Kind of push this. So it feels like what's happening is I need the inverse of this. So I'm going to right click on the mask and say invert mask. And this is more of the effect that I was going for. But it might be a little bit harsh now that we've got those uh, values kind of rearranged for us here. So I'll do something like this. I kind of like this range in here. And I'm going to see if I can just knock back the entire effect a little bit. So I'm going to drag this to the right slightly. And so let's take a look at the final results of this. So I think that's uh, looking pretty good. Now the only other thing is with this, if this is like sun damaged part to this, I might be able to take the roughness part of it and then obviously if we've got this uh, pretty low it's going to be nice and shiny. It's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking to kind of maybe even dull this up even more. So as we do that, you can see what we're going to kind of we're going to kind of generate in through here like this. So I'm just going to rotate the light around just a little bit. Shift and right click and rotate the light, and we can see what we've got. Um, now here was what I was telling you if we wanted to go multiple levels deep. So if I wanted to add another mask to this whole thing and do some hand painting on this, I can make another folder group and then I'll put it at the top of this here and call this top grad as well and I'll just take this what we've got here this folder group and then drag it into this top grad like this um, I will might have to t change this and put it in pass through as well for this so now I've got this uh, folder in here this folder and now it's going to give me the ability to go ahead and do a white mask and then I could paint into it and if we looked at our brushes and we did something like this tree bark we could paint into this uh, mask here we could paint into it black and then start to take this away so control right click and I'll just do this here I'm going to hold down alt and just take a look at uh, what we're doing as far as a uh, uh, painting and the flows down pretty low so maybe I'll drag that up a little bit and then click back into here and start to paint into this just to see what we got I'm gonna tap um, not C uh, let's let's go and just take a look at just the base color information and see when I do this mask you can see it is taking this away the effect is not super super strong so maybe I go and do the flow even more for this and I'm going to take the size down a little bit and if I want um, a really hard stamp I could just use uh, the mouse and click with the mouse instead of using the pen that I've got
So I could also, even if I, if I want to overdrive this a little bit, I could do um, add a levels to that mask and then drag this up within through here. And I'm going to kind of crush the values a bit. So maybe it's a, a bit stronger and through there. So as you watch this, control right click. And you can see what we got going on here for this. And if I tap X, we could paint back into the mask if I'm not super happy with that. So I think this could be a kind of a cool look. I'm going to tap M to go back to my material. And then now you can see what we're able to kind of paint in here with this. So maybe that starts to make it look a little bit more interesting at that point. So I'm just going to shift right click and just move this around a bit more. And I'll go ahead and save that and call that for that section. So in the section, we're going to go ahead and add some effects that look something like grease, just like what we did on the uh, top part of the cannon here for the metal. And so we'll just make another group and I'll call this grease. We're going to go ahead and make a new fill layer. I'll call this grease as well. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag this into the grease layer. And um, I don't think this matters. I'm just going to keep doing this. Just keep pushing my uh, my um, folder groups to pass through. And then on grease, um, I'll leave color, height, roughness, and metal. So on heightness, let's put something like... 0.01 just for now. Um, I'm also going to make this instead of normal. I'll do this as a multiply. And let's see how dark we can get this going here. Um, metal. If I do this, if I pull this all the way up, I'm just going to try this for now. I'm going to pull the roughness back down somewhere in here. And then for the base color, I'm just going to make it just a little bit darker right in through here. So now that we've got all that set up, then I'll go ahead and make a black mask and then uh, kill everything. And then I'll go ahead and paint into that. So i got my brushes here. I'm going to go back to the, to the tree bark, kind of like that one. I'm just going to see what that, uh, what that gives. And then I'm going to take the flow and put the flow up pretty high on it. Hold on control, right click, and I'll take the size down just a little. And this time I'm going to try to paint right underneath, right, something like this. I'm going to drag, drag down a little. I just want to kind of see if I can see um, what's going on here with the results. So the other thing is I might need to shift right click and then move my uh, light direction around. So it's kind of interesting as it moves away from the light, it gets a bit darker. But as it's in the light, um, it kind of lightens it up just because I think uh, what we got going on here with the roughness value. If I take, yeah, if I take that roughness value and I drag it back this way, then it's going to be dark no matter where I'm at. So i got to be a little bit careful with what goes on with the roughness value on there if I want it to kind of feel dark. And uh, that, that's kind of what I'm what I'm going for. Now, I am getting kind of slow down. I am recording um, the video at the same time as I'm working, so you're probably going to get better performance than I am. But the other thing is I'm, I'm, I'm doing quite a bit with uh, the different layers and things like that that we got going on here. So... Performance might not be the best for me. Um, it seems to be pretty good whenever, you know, I'm just kind of like in this one spot and just looking at it, things that way. So, again, I think this is kind of cool where this is where you get to use your artistic eye and artistic liberties and kind of, uh, you know, maybe build a little bit of a story element in your head about you know what happened over time and how did this get discolored and why do certain things kind of run down 
and through certain areas. So I could even maybe emphasize some of the shapes on this design a little bit more. Like this. Make my brush size a little bit larger. And when I do that, then it's going to make that quite a bit darker on the bottom. And then maybe, maybe this... Uh, is darkening this up quite a bit in this area underneath. Maybe things are kind of uh, something's happening here with the metal and this sitting against this and maybe wear and tear on there, kind of scraping along there. And you could also use this just to uh, visually punch things out. So if I if I darken around here. Uh, maybe there's some stuff happening from the wheels where the wheels kind of, um, over time have, you know, there's been some dirt that's kind of flown up and made it a little bit darker, but artistically I'm, I'm getting more separation between those elements in there. So I'll make this a little bit smaller and I'll just paint. I'm going to hit undo real quick. That was a bit strong for me. I'm just going to paint some of these elements like this within through here. Shift right click to move our light around. And I want light to fall within there a little bit. So I can see that a bit better. Now, if I paint anything specific on the wheels, um, if it's a static object and it just kind of sits there, this is something to kind of think about. But if this is going to be animated, you would have to think about, like, if you put dirt on the bottom of the wheels where the wheels maybe sit and hit the ground, it could look um, good and interesting for... Um, it's sitting in this one shot, but if you rotate the wheels around, then that could become problematic because... Uh, that dirt stain would move around but you could potentially think about that in the real world where if something was sitting and it got discolored on the bottom and it sat for a long time and then you did move it that dirt would move with it too so maybe maybe that even still works in that situation but this is something to keep in mind something to think about as you um, as you build some of these details out And if you do have symmetry on, um, let me hit undo real quick for this, and then just turn symmetry off. Like you'll get, maybe you'll get into these situations where, um, if you've used symmetry for a good chunk, then that's that's all right. But uh, maybe you want to break symmetry now and then, so it just doesn't look, you know, uh, that it's so obvious that you've used symmetry all the time. Um, and so maybe you got some different uh, discoloration and different stains on one side versus uh, the other. So the symmetry helps for sure speed up how long it takes to uh, do everything. But at a certain point, then maybe you want to break that, that symmetry on there. So I'll tap X on there. And if anything's just way too strong, then maybe just knocking it back a little bit. So let's make this a little bit darker down and through here on the bottom. Just rotate my light around, shift right click. And then I'm going to zoom back out within through here. Um, yeah, I don't. I'm just maybe knocking some of this back because it's some of it can be pretty heavy, heavy-handed. Like this. So I 
think I'm pretty getting to be pretty happy with that. And I'll call that for this section and go ahead and leave that. Okay, in this part, what we're going to do is lighten up some areas with details and add just maybe a little bit of saturation uh, with some color. And so what I've done, I've already made a new folder group, just added this, just like what we've done before, I called it Lighten, and then I've made a new uh, fill layer and put it in there. I changed the layer group to Pass Through. And then on here, if we take a look, uh, this is the color information that I've kind of added for it. Um, I'm trying to get it to be a little bit lighter and saturated towards uh, yellow orange. And then I set this to overlay. So that overlay is going to help let some of the color information, some of the details show up underneath and still um, be able to lighten it quite a bit and then add saturation pretty easily. And then I added some roughness to it, so I'm making it a bit rougher on here. And then I wanted to use one of the brushes that we've got. If you uh, scroll down maybe a little bit, you can see I've got this ink splatter. And so I've got it on this brush right here. And what I'm going to do is go to the mask, and we can see it. One thing before I started painting, I wanted to show you if, you, um, if we control, um, control, and then left mouse, Sorry, control and move up and down. Sorry, I get a little bit confused on this. If we do control and move up and down, we can actually spin the brush on here and then change the angle for this. Now, if we do control and then left and then right with the left mouse, we can change the actual flow and the intensity of this. And we've already looked at control, right click, we can change the size on there. So. With those, uh, with those things, it should be easy for you to kind of uh, get in here and control what's going on with the brush. Now you can tap X, and we could be painting with white at that point. So let's just make sure with the brush, uh, let's tap X, and we're painting white into this mask for this. And you can see what I got going on here for this. I'm going to do control and uh, left mouse to do the the flow and then do the flow all the way up on this. So let me just go move this up here so we can kind of see this a little bit better. And if any time, maybe uh, if the keyboard shortcuts um, don't really work all that great for you, then, um, you know, maybe just use the controls over here and stuff like that. Because um, I'm, I'm using the Wacom pen, and if I do this for the for the flow, it does, it does work. It's just I... I probably need to see this over here a bit better to kind of know what's going on. And I'm going to control right click to make this a little bit smaller. And this could end up looking kind of like maybe mold was growing on here or something to that effect. Now if you wanted we could always go back to these fill layers. We could add height information to this and say maybe this was uh, sticking up a little bit. That's obviously too strong so this is dial this back until we get just a little bit of information on there. So maybe I'll do like 3-5 on here. So then I want to get in close to it and I want to rotate the light around. And maybe I just want just just a little bit of depth uh, to this but not not too much. So I'm going to go back through and I'll kind of paint in here like this. And let me zoom into the back side. And I can turn symmetry back on for some of these. And right now, I know I feel like I'm being extremely heavy-handed with this. And I think what I'm going to do is knock this all back. So I'll tap X. So I go and I'll be painting with black at that point. And then make my brush size a bit smaller. 
and then start eating away at some of these details. And I kind of feel like as I'm looking at this, the specular value on here is still a bit high. And so if I push this back, it's going to kind of darken it a little bit. So um, to combat that, what I can do is if I get rid of all, let's say I get rid of all the, uh, the specular component, and I just leave just a little bit, uh, if it starts to darken it up, quite a bit then I could lighten this back up like this and then again I'm going to start painting into this right here like this right And I'm going to rotate it around a bit more. And I have an idea that I just want to try. Um, I'm going to tap X to paint back in. And just like we did with the grease kind of stains that were running down, I'm curious what it might look like if um, I start to paint into this a bit. And start to do streaks that maybe kind of lighten things up a bit, and so then maybe I need a different a different brush for that. Um, just gonna see what what we got going on here. Something I could grab. I think I'll go. I'll just I'll just go back to this the basic soft brush. and make it quite small. And on this one, um, I'm going to take off the size the size information and I will turn on opacity for the flow. Because you can see it was doing these really crazy small lines up in here. I'm going to hit undo to get back out of that. Try to make my brush size pretty small. And then now at this point, I'm just hand painting. What I could potentially do, if I really wanted the contrast to stick out, is um, wherever there's the grease, I could paint just a little bit of light area in there. And that could even, that's going to like really pop this out as far as uh, contrast goes. And it'll make those uh, those lines feel these grease lines kind of pop out even more. So we can get kind of an interesting uh, effect going that way. Like so. Then it might be possible that some of this information I had in the sculpt and it baked in the normal map, and then maybe maybe I use that to my advantage and start to uh, pick up on some of the color information that's on there. I'm going to tap X and then paint out some of these details. So I think this is not a bad practice to be in. Maybe you paint into something, and if it's just too overpowering and too strong, then you can just tap X and you can paint paint that information back out. And so I think that's looking pretty good. I'm going to paint just a little more information maybe back on this back piece and take a look at that. And let me 
shift right click and move the light direction around just a little bit. Right here, like this. And I think I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to turn off the uh, the uh, symmetry options. Just zoom back a little bit, kind of frame this up. And again, if we've got our different camera information, we could just cycle through and uh, find whatever you find is your uh, favorite camera view for this. And I kind of I kind of like this one, and then just get your uh, lighting information into the right position. And um, I think I think that I'm gonna go ahead and call it on this one. I think I've showed quite a few different techniques and quite a few different ways that you could uh, start getting yourself started inside of Substance Painter and start uh, using the tools. Um, so I I know this video, these two videos for painting have just barely scratched the surface. Uh, the, the program's got a lot of depth to it and a lot of um, a lot of really cool um, and interesting tools and things like that. So um, there's definitely a lot more to be explored, but I think this should get you going and should get you to a point um, that uh, that'll get you some really nice results.